When it comes to the U.S. role in global security, there may be no man as well versed as former Defense Secretary Robert Gates, who served in this role for both President George W. Bush and also President Barack Obama. From his days in the Air Force to his decades-long service in the CIA, Gates has a unique view of what these cuts could cost us. It doesn't take into account that you're already halfway through the fiscal year. So all the cuts will have to come out of half the budget. Uh, second, they're on a continuing resolution from 2012, so the budget's already been cut compared to the president's request by virtue of having to continue forward in 2013 with what they had in 2012. So that's a double whammy, if you will. And then you exempt a third of the budget, personnel, so all of a sudden, you're left to take all of these cuts in fairly narrow elements of the military and those that matter the most in many respects, operations, maintenance, training, and readiness. So that's where the costs come in. And oh, you know, I've read all of the commentary about the Harry S. Truman not deploying and delayed maintenance um, of uh, Navy ships and Air Force cutting flying hours. I mean, these are real things, and they're real choices imposed by the service chiefs uh, to try and meet these and try and meet these demands and what what people don't understand is there is then a trickle down effect to ever to the littlest post and and navy uh, base in terms of everybody just tightening up so there's no money for anything mm -hmm. Because everybody, because of all the uncertainty that's associated with it so even where decisions haven't been made the doors are closing because people want to make sure that uh, they don't get caught short. What could we come to regret? Not right now, not immediately, but let's say in a few years from now. When you cut operations and maintenance and training, then, then you're headed for what we had in the late 70s, which is a hollow force. And particularly if the Congress won't allow the, uh, the Pentagon to eliminate bases and facilities that are not needed or to cut programs that are no longer needed. Uh, the Congress has always been a problem in both of those areas. And so if you can't do this in a rational way and if you can't establish priorities, then it becomes an incredibly difficult task. And, you know, we've, we've been down this road before. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we've screwed it up every time. And we always pay a price in terms of both money and blood. Senator Chuck Hagel had a very difficult confirmation process. How difficult will that make it for him to operate as, an, as the next defense secretary? Well, I, I think it depends. Um, I, I think it depends in part on how aggressive he is in mending fences and, and how um, resistant the Republicans are to letting him do that. My hope is that they realize that the country really needs for him to be successful. Nobody wants a Secretary of Defense to fail. So my hope is that Republicans, having made their point, uh, will now work with uh, Chuck in terms of addressing some of the problems that we've just been talking about. You would like for them to do that. Are you hopeful they will do that? I actually am. I actually am. I, most of them are pretty serious and responsible people. There's no benefit to the country, and I think there's actually no political benefit to continuing to create problems for him or to continue to uh, criticize him. The point's been made, let's now move on and let's do the best thing for the country, and, and I think they will do that. What should be his first order of business? I think the sequestration went into effect the day after he became secretary. So obviously the budget uh, and how to administer these cuts and how to try and protect critical military capabilities will be the first priority. But then developing a strategy for dealing with these cuts over the longer term and establishing priorities to the best he can with the president and with the Congress, I think will be, will be his biggest challenge. Mr. Secretary, we're going to be completing our withdrawal from Afghanistan by 2014. What kind of U.S. presence should we have there? I think we have to have an ongoing presence of some kind, and I think we have to continue to provide assistance to the Afghans. 
what people forget when the Soviets pulled out, uh, the Afghan government and army actually did reasonably well for about two years until Soviet aid ended mm -hmm. with the end of the Soviet Union. And then it's when the Civil War really got going. <clears throat> I think after all of the blood and the treasure that we have expended in Afghanistan, it would be a tragedy not to get the end game right. What keeps you up at night? Well, now that I'm no longer Secretary of Defense, very little. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's comforting to me. <laughs>